Hey, what's up? So I got a few questions on my latest main channel video for the DJI Mic 2 about how I made the gear in that video float. That was kind of a play on the idea that the DJI Mic 2s had 32-bit float, so I made the mics and the cameras float as well. So the way that I did it is pretty simple, and there's kind of two methods that you can do. One makes it a little bit more difficult, but the first way is just to use a tripod and then use light stands or microphone stands, anything that you want to just hold the piece of gear up. And you wanna make sure that when you're shooting that first pass, that the mic stands or light stands or whatever you're using, is gonna be easy to mask out because really the only technique I used was just masking. That was basically it. It's nothing super technical, but you just wanna make sure that whatever you're shooting, make sure you can mask out what's holding the gear up. And then after you shoot that plate, you're gonna to wanna to shoot just a clean plate and just take everything out of the shot. Make sure the lighting's the same, obviously. I shoot it all in one take, so I shoot the gear, leave it for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then I just take the gear out, and then I just shoot another 10 to 15 seconds of a clean plate. And once you do that, you're ready to start making gear float. So the way that I'm gonna do it is I am just going to find the one take that I wanted. With this shot here, I just used two light stands and one mic stand to hold up the DJI Mic 2. The receiver is actually you know, showing the audio levels bump and then I'm just going to mask out the, the light stands and the mic stands as best I can. And then that's pretty much the first step. Now, just that itself, not really that believable. That just kind of looks again, like a picture that you just kind of, you know, erased the mic and light stands out. So to really sell it, what I do is I'll either do a little push in with some keyframes. So you go to the position and you just keyframe a push in. This is similar done in Final Cut and in DaVinci, but I'm using Premiere Pro here. That helps. So there's some movement in the shot, even though it's digital push in. But what really sells it is adding some camera shake. So I have a camera shake preset. There's a bunch of different presets you can probably buy or get for free for whatever video editor you're using. But adding a camera shake is gonna make it actually look like the products are floating in space. One thing I didn't mention is that once you've done your masking, you're gonna wanna take both of those clips and nest them. That's what you call it in Premiere, is nesting the clips so that they're one clip instead of two. And once you've nested them, that's when you can add the push-ins and the camera shake to add some movement to your shot so it actually looks like the products are floating. Now, the second method is almost exactly the same, except you're gonna use a specific piece of gear. And this is the piece of gear that I used for one of the shots. This is an Axoon Top Rig S40. And this is just a little motorized slider. Now, what's cool about this is that you can set A and B points and do repeatable camera moves. So for this moving shot that I did, this was the only one that I did because it's actually a little bit more tricky, but I set my A and B points on this slider and then I did one pass with the DJI Mic 2 being held up by a 15 millimeter rod. And then I did another pass just clean without the DJI Mic 2 there at all. And then I just lined up both of those clips did the exact same technique, except I had to actually keyframe where the mask was as the camera is pushing in. And uh, yeah, then I just nested that clip, added some camera shake to it, and we have this. And that's really as easy as it is. It's a pretty simple method. I've been doing stuff like this for a while, but I haven't actually like implemented it in a video in a really long time. So that's how easy it is. I'm glad that there are some people that thought that it looked cool. I probably could have done a little bit better job with the mask, but I think for the video, it worked. And there's such quick clips that maybe if you looked really hard, you could see where the mask is. But since they're so quick, it was just pretty easy to pull off. So yeah, hope that was interesting. Um, thanks for watching videos here on the second channel and I'll see you soon, later.